If you have an interest in horses and love learning more about horses, the horse industry, teaching, or even managing your own horse business, then you're in the right place. We would love you to join us on our mission, which is to improve the lives of horses around the world through the education of riders, handlers, and trainers. So get comfortable, listen in, and enjoy. This is another of our popular Listener's Choice interviews, which we're playing over the weekend. We've chosen the most popular interviews for you to select the Listener's Choice winner. If you're not sure how the Listener's Choice competition works, have a look at horsechats.com slash choice for the rules and the leaderboard. Hey, it's Glennis here. Just to let you know that even though the quality in this audio isn't first rate, the information certainly is. Please excuse the audio quality and focus on the education and what you'll learn in this interview. Our guest today is Peter Turner. Peter's got a background in dressage, show jumping, eventing and hacking. He also works with some riders with disabilities and he's coached a couple of para riders for the Paralympics in both London and Beijing. We'll talk about that a bit later in the interview. How are you today, Peter? Um, I'm fine, thank you. And thank you for having me on your show. Oh, it's wonderful to have you here, Peter. So good to talk to you. Thank you. (laughs) Peter, can you start off with your favourite quote? Yes. Favourite quote is, be kind to your horse. I was taught that by a lady in England that I trained with. Yep. So this particular saying, she's taught you, do you use it for your riders? Yes, I do. I try to influence it onto them so they know that it's not all about just getting on and, and just riding. You have to know find in different ways with the aids and and just treating the horse properly so yep. the horse can respond to you better. Yes. Yeah. Peter, when um you first started with horses, do you have some memories there of how you first started the first time you sat on a horse or were with a horse? Yeah, it was in South America, Guyana, where yep. I was born. And uh, my mum and my brother and sister used to ride. And um, my mum used to take me on a lead with her when, when she used to ride out. And that's how I started riding. At first, I didn't like it. I used to cry a lot. <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, that's how I started. And I just remember with my mum leading me and we used to ride through all the sugar cane fields and everything like that. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember the pony that you used to ride, the horse you rode? Um, when you're that young, I, I think I started about four and everything just looked big. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah, just looked enormous. So, yeah, but I remember it was a, like a little bay horse. Yeah. And my mum used to ride a grey one. Mm-hmm. And then, Peter, when you decided, what made you, because you said you started off and you didn't really like it, but what made it then that you enjoyed the riding and enjoyed the horses and then you decided to have a career with horses? Well, it was when we moved to England because my dad's English and my mum was from America. And when we moved to England, um, one day I just said to my parents, oh, can I try riding and they just looked at me and they went, okay. And, and then off I went. They found the riding school that I could go to. And so I started. And I just found it very interesting. Like, it was a challenge, but interesting. Yeah. And how old were you at that stage? I would have been about 14 when yeah. I decided to go back to the riding okay. in England. Yeah. Good. Good. So if someone said to you now, you know, 14-year-old or even a bit older, and they said they wanted to work with horses, work in the horse industry, what sort of core skills or character traits do you think they need to work in the horse industry? For one, they've got to be able to uh, like know about horses a little bit, but yeah. also too, you've got to be able to really love the job and want to do it with the animal because mm-hmm. it is a hard job. It's not like nine to five because if a horse gets sick, you've got to stay with it. So you've got to think it's all different hours that you're working. It's just not one set time. Yep. And you've got to be really, uh, you've got to really love the job and love animals to do it. I think. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And anything else, or do you think the other skills come from that? Once you get into it and you think that's the job you want, mm-hmm. I think then all the skills start to build and you learn things, you watch people, and 
you pick ideas up and you start to learn a lot from it. Yeah, yeah. And it is a great job as long as you've got that mindset that you know it's not a nine-to-five job. And Peter, I was going to ask you, what's the best thing then? You said it's a great job, but what's the best thing about working in the horse industry? I think waking up in the morning and just seeing the the horses and just just the just the horses they just they're just a great animal and they like when you're feeling down they cheer you up and they make you feel good about yourself and, and just riding them and when you do a movement and you just think oh my god I just taught that horse that and things like that is I think yeah. okay that's good and so you've talked about your mother having an influence. Who else has had an influence on you with horses? Um, lots of people. Like I've been to a lot of people, but like there's a Tina Wombastar, yep. Caroline Lieutenant was a big one. Like she she really helped me a lot. And then there's people like Sue Cunningham and Giza Nelson and, and people that have just helped me out a long way with tips and, and things like that to mm-hmm. get by mm-hmm. and to help me with my riding. Yep, yep. What about a horse? Have you got horses or a horse who's influenced you that you'd like to talk about? Well, I've had many. I've had problem horses that no one else wanted to ride. That's where I seem to be in the feel of most. But the most one was Caroline Lieutenant, yes. horse to Mushkin. Yeah, yeah. He was her Grand Prix horse back in the old days. And she gave us a few lessons on it, and it was just fantastic. Yeah, I think that's magic, isn't it, if you're allowed to ride a horse like that and, uh, you know, use it almost as a schoolmaster, even if she's competing on it. She must have trusted you to be able to ride her horse at that time. It would have been good. Yeah, it was just uh, it was just amazing. I remember I was like 21, and it was just when she rang up and offered the, for me to have less, a lesson, several lessons on it, I was so excited, mm. like. I didn't think I that day I didn't sleep all night just <laughs> waiting to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was just amazing feeling, like because he in those days he he was one of the horses that had the best piaf and passage, and yep. it was just amazing. Now you talked earlier about some of the problem horses that you had. What sort of problems did they have, and what did you do to correct them? So I had horses that were like. They were very frightful horses, very um, hypo, frightened, and they either reared or barked. And I had one called Johnny Blackwood, and he was very scared horse. And when I was first asked to ride him, people were going, oh, my God, that horse has flipped over, it's done this. But he actually turned out in the end to be a really good horse. Like, I won a lot on him in the dressage up yep. to medium. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so, and again, it's all about studying what horse needs and why it's doing that. And that's, that's what I've learned on my way, how to work out about the horses and what they need and how to ride, how to ride the difficult horses. Yep. Yep. What do you think then, Peter, has been your proudest moment? My proudest moment, I mm-hmm. think, would be um, riding Priest and George mm-hmm. on an old horse called Double Dutch. Yeah. Or was it double cold? One of those. And it was owned by a lady called Andre Millman. And yeah, that was that was a great day. Like we came second in the Priest and George mm-hmm. back in those days. Yes, that was very exciting for me. Good. Good. What about thinking about where you are now? What do you think your biggest challenge has been? Well, um, I had an accident two years ago, so I've only just come back to riding, and that's been a big challenge because it was my back. Uh-huh. So I'm still going through physio and everything, and I, I'm back riding. Yep. But yep. Um, like today was the first day I actually could sit trot for 20 minutes. <laughs> Good. So I was excited about that, but it, that was one of my biggest, hardest tasks. Yeah. And not riding yeah. for two years. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes when you have the riding taken away and then you get it back, you just appreciate it so much more. Oh, de- definitely. Now, Peter, I know that you work a bit with your your Paralympic riders and you've, you've taken a couple to London and Beijing. I'd like you to talk about just the different areas or, or the different, if there are different ways of coaching and what you do differently between your your 
power riders and your able-bodied riders? Oh, with, with the with the power riders. Yes. Um, so so sometimes they like Hannah Dodd had a one leg that didn't work very well. So you have to then work out how you're going to do things and position their body. Sometimes you may have to change rain aids, like or you may have to carry a whip, or some of them have to carry two. You just have to work out what that rider needs at that time to work it all out. Mm, mm. And it, it is a challenge sometimes where where a normal uh, a body rider could just get on and, and they're okay with their legs and everything, but those, some of those guys don't have the strength. So we have to work ways out of, of performing, making the horses perform and work. So if it means them carrying two whips, that's what you have to do, or carrying a certain rein like a they've got like a rein it's two joints together with slots in it so they could hold it in their hands if they're weak in the hands yep yep so you have to work on what rider needs at that time yeah 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 so it sort of challenged you a bit as an instructor too you know to think not just normal classical riding but how can we work around this and you'd also have to have a knowledge of the rules to know when riders can use different aids and carry two whips and things yeah. like that you've got to have a good knowledge of those rules yeah that's right they've got different rules and especially with their bridles and stuff and you just have to learn, make sure you know all the rules you read the rule book in and out so you yep. don't make mistakes yeah yeah but it, it is satisfaction when you when you've achieved something done especially when you've gotten two to the olympics it's just amazing like and, and just to see them go and be happy, they're, they're such happy people. And, and the horses know, it's amazing, like the horses know what's going on and you just think what amazing animals to, to set all that. Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. Peter, have you got a book that you'd like to recommend to our listeners? Um, the book I like is Reiner Klimke's book. So Reiner Klimke's book, so. yep. Yeah. I, I really like the. I really like the, He's always been one of my favorite idols. Like, yeah. And I really like the way he rides and he trains the horses and everything in his day. Yes. And um, his daughter's book is pretty good too. The trotting poles and gymnastic work yep. over the pole. Yeah. 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 And remember, you can find all the books recommended by our guests at horsechats.com slash books. You can have a look at the guest page for the individual book they recommended or just look at the recommended books by order of popularity at horsechats.com slash books. Peter, what are you looking forward to at the moment? You're, you're looking forward to doing some more sitting trot, but have you got anything else on the horizon? Yeah. Well, I've written a list through my life, and I've got five things left I need to do. Um, there are 20 things on the list, and I've got five left now. And the main one is to achieve Grand Prix. So I'd like to uh, get a horse to Grand Prix. Mm -hmm. And have you got a horse now that you uh, would like to take to Grand Prix, or you're still looking for a horse? I'm still looking, but I've got some. I've got some youngsters in now for training, so I'm yep. hoping. Mm -hmm. That one of those may turn out and and become successful. So I have to keep my fingers crossed. <laughs> okay, good. Good. Yes. All right, then, Peter. Now, if you could summarize your philosophy into a lesson today, that would be great. Uh, my philosophy would be to listen to your horse and make sure you do the right thing by the horse and listen to what it's trying to tell you. And make sure the horse is always happy. That's the main thing. And and if there's a problem, stop and think about it. Don't just force the issue because horses aren't naturally bad animals. So when something's wrong, you need to check it and think, what's going on? Is it me? Is it I'm giving the wrong aid? Or is the horse sore somewhere, etc.? So that's what I would say. So always consider your horse. That's what I would say. Yeah, yeah. Good. And now, Peter, how can people contact you? What are your contact details? So they can contact me on 0407011418 or I've just gone on Facebook and it's Peter A. Turner Equestrian and they can contact me 
they can get me through that or on my mobile. Okay. And now, Peter, those details also will be on horsechats.com slash Peter Turner or go to horsechats.com slash, for, uh, sorry, horsechats.com, search for Peter or search for Turner. Okay. Yeah, and thanks for talking to us today, Peter. Um, enjoying talking to you and looking forward to your journey and uh, getting your Grand Prix horse, and we'll uh, talk to you again sometime soon. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you, Peter. Bye. Bye. Now, if you're still there, you probably know that I'm absolutely passionate about education within the horse industry. That's why I host this podcast. My other venture is Online Horse College. Have a look now at onlinehorsecollege.com and I'll see you over there. Remember that our comments and instructions are general in nature and do not take into consideration your individual horses or your individual ability and circumstances. If you enjoyed this podcast, then please leave your comment below.